Here we have the all new 2023 Dodge Hornet. This one comes in the GT all wheel drive trim level in the beautiful blue Bayou paint. And then we have black cloth leather red interior. And the powertrain consists of a two liter Hurricane turbocharged four cylinder engine made it to a nine speed automatic transmission. And that gets us 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. But as we come around to the front end here, we do have our LED headlamps along with LED daytime running lights and the lights don't flash like that. That's just how my camera's picking them up. But love that look, especially in this blue. And on a bright day like today, it really shines. And then down here, we have 17 inch aluminum wheels. We get passive keyless entry on the front. And then over here we have our power door lock controls, rear window lock here. We do get one touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors. And then we have power folding mirrors with blind spot monitors. And then to use your power mirrors, just pick a side and you can adjust there. And you can lock them out in the middle there. And that's how you control the dial. Bottle holder in here. Headlamp controls are here. Is your auto mode off. And then you can adjust the gauge cluster brightness. You have a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And then here we have a six way manual driver's seat. Love the look of the seat though. But I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being six foot three with longer legs. So let's take a look at this leg room back here. So the space isn't fantastic, but still. I get seat back pockets on both sides, but you don't really see that that often in a more inexpensive vehicle these days. So I'm impressed by that. And the seat quality, especially the leatherette, feels pretty nice. And I mean, if you fit two people back here without having somebody in the middle seat, you're not really in that much trouble. And I still have a couple inches of headroom, which is pretty impressive for this kind of vehicle as well. Rear AC vents are here. You get a USB-C, USB-A charge port down there. And then our middle seat does fold down we have a little phone holder, cup holders in there, and then we can even fold that down to get to the back. But I'll show you what else we can do here in a moment. But I do like that we have the premium LED dome lights throughout. But let's make our way towards the back. And then if you wanna use your child lock, you can just turn that here back and forth or this one here, excuse me. Coming around to the back end here, we do get the LED tail lamps. I love how it's kind of got like a charger-esque look to it. Looks super nice. And then in here, we have this optional storage container, 12 volt. And then underneath here, you have a tire inflator kit. And then because of this thing, I got to lift it back up. Ugh. And then a quick look underneath the vehicle is our exhaust system. But coming around to the rear passenger side, fuel filler there. And then if you want to fold the seat down, you can just pull that and then you can run longer objects from the back to the front and then to put it back into place, pretty easy to do. Just make sure the seat belt's not in the way and it'll snap right back in. And then over here, we have a six way manual front passenger seat as well. So I'm glad we get that same adjustability. And then our glove compartment, pretty decent size for the segment. But here's the window sticker and a huge shout out to Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Franklin for allowing me to review this car today. I'll leave a link below to it as well as their entire inventory in the description below. But anywhere you all need to pause to take a closer look, feel free. But now let's make our way around and look in the engine bay.
But there's that two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Packed nice and tight in there. But let's hop in the driver's seat. So I like the leather wrap steering wheel here. Feels pretty nice. That might be leatherette, not 100%. It feels like the back of the seat, but looks cool as well. I love the flat bottom look that they went with. Now over here to the radio, we do have AM, FM, XM radio, along with Bluetooth audio. And then you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto compatibility too. Turn the fan down a little bit. And then I love that we have the shortcuts. Like in most of the Chrysler's, you can just go to your heated seat, heated steering wheel toggle there, and then go through those. So we do get the heated steering wheel as well as three stage heated seats for the driver and front passenger. And then if you go to the comfort mode, you can go ahead and adjust the temperature as well as fan direction, the AC, if you wanna go ahead and set the auto mode, sync, do all of that. I love that we can sync and unsync, cut the whole system off, do everything from the screen. And then you have a few shortcut buttons if you wanna do that without having to pull something up here. Now for your Bluetooth, you just have to pair your phone, walks you right through it. You can either have the car search for a device or you can find the radio on your phone. So again, pretty simple. And then I love the vehicle settings here so I can see how much longer until I need to get the oil changed. And then I have two different drive modes, auto and sport. So I can toggle those here. And then you also have the gauge cluster on the left side. I love how the speedometer kind of changes as you go through the different modes. And then you have your performance settings here. So you can keep an eye on your turbo as well as your torque output. And then consumption history. And then you also have your transmission temperature gauge is 12 volt and then oil temp. And I like that everything's right here on the screen and it looks super cool. All your settings right here. And then you can go through all of your safety settings here. If you wanna turn your lane sense strength to high instead of low or whatever, you can do that. But if you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment below about the system, I can try and walk you through it. Now for the backup camera, great picture. And then the guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel. And then you also have your rear parking sensor, so those will turn different colors and illuminate as you get too close to an object as you're backing up. Down below here, hazards. You can adjust your temperature down here, and it'll pull up in the top corners there whether it's the front passenger or the driver. And again, that auto mode, you can toggle that on and off and then adjust your fan speed there, fan direction here, AC toggle here. And then you can decide whether you want your vents to automatically open and shut or set it manually, cut the whole system off. So pretty nice. And then down in here, we do have a 12 volt and then a USB-C, USB-A charge port. And then we have our auto stop toggle here. And for the shifter, pull the lever, reverse neutral drive, then you can come over here and manually shift. And then volume is here, you can adjust that, mute by hitting the button, and then you can pull down for a decrease in volume. Electronic parking brake, pull it to engage at the brake, press down to disengage, and then you can turn either your stability control or your parking sensors on and off. Cup holders are here. You have the small center console cubby space. Pretty interesting how they did that. It's super deep in there. And then over here, we can control those dome lights for the front. And we can set all those settings there. And then also, this will be to toggle the ones in the back on too. Here's a view of the back. And I'm in this is interesting. You have the grab handles up front, but you don't have any in the back. But blinkers are here. And then high beams there when the lights are on. You can turn them on and off and then flash by pulling up and then you can toggle your lane sense on and off with that switch. 
and then to the right side. Interesting setup here. So to use your windshield wipers, you could pull up here for the front wiper, pull down here for the rear wiper, and then you actually adjust the wipers here. So you have your low sensitivity front wiper, high sensitivity, then you have low and high, and then you can turn it off there and then pull up here for the front mist, pull back for the rear mist. And then this button on the side is actually for the view of the gauge cluster. So that is, that's something, I'll tell you that. Now over here to the left side of the steering wheel, you can toggle your cruise control. And I like that you can just hit this button and you'll see it. You can either do adaptive off, speed limiter, or you can have the uh, adaptive cruise there then adjust that and then adjust the gap adjust for that as well. And then you have your Bluetooth buttons here. You can go through your settings down below by hitting this button and then using the scroll bar. And then you have your volume controls here. Just a super strange setup compared to what I'm used to in any vehicle, honestly. But here's our push button start. And finally, here's a key fob with remote start. And now it's time we go ahead and take this Dodge Hornet GT all wheel drive out on the road for a test drive. So starting the test drive in this Hornet GT, eh, it's a very interesting play by Chrysler, specifically with a Dodge lineup to come out with a vehicle like this. I mean, you have the Trailblazer, the Kia Seltos, the Hyundai Kona as competitors, even the, the Rogue Sport, but still just interesting in my opinion. And what makes it such an interesting play is I feel like they're late to the party bringing this all new Hornet to market. But at the same time, when you see the numbers, the Trailblazer has done quite well. And then the Kona and the Seltos have been kind of doing their own thing as well. The cars are still selling, they're still out on the roads. Like I said, Dodge is just several years late to the party. And I think I can't remember if the Seltos came out first, or I guess it was probably the Kona, but ever since the Trailblazer came back, I think Chevy did such a good job with that vehicle and then pairing it with the Encore GX that it kind of brought that market share back. In terms of just having a small SUV that drives like a car more than it does an SUV. But what makes this interesting is this is one of the more powerful engines that are offered for a vehicle like this. Now in the Trailblazer, you have either the 1.2 or 1.3. You can get an electric Kona, but for the most part, you have naturally aspirated engines. Mostly I see those, I think with the, it's like a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder in the Konas. And then the Seltos, I think that one was around two liters naturally aspirated as well. I have to double check. But by far, this is the more powerful engine. You're getting 268 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter turbo four. It's, it's just an interesting play, in my opinion. So I have the vehicle in sport mode. Now I'm going to put it into the manual mode. And I'm going to get on the interstate here. And then we'll give it a little throttle. Little hesitant on the shifts, but a pretty powerful car. And then my other, something interesting that I have determined is these controls are quite strange and I'm saying that to say it's just nothing is where you would expect it to be so having to being able to change your menus from the right side here and then your lane sense trigger is over there your sport modes here the auto stops down there it's just it's interesting it's a weird setup in my opinion 
but ride quality is decent for this car coming down the interstate nothing out of the ordinary for something like this in this segment but again it's one of the more powerful vehicles you can get in a small SUV like this and there's the auto stop there now in terms of what you get for the money it's around 33 grand sticker price for this car but I mean you're getting a trailblazer pretty loaded out for around that money the sale toast I don't even know if it goes that high so again it's an interesting play to get this engine and transmission for this price point because it is a tad expensive for a vehicle like this but again it has its own market if you're in the market for a Seltos, if you're in the market for a Trailblazer, Hyundai Kona, then I mean, you definitely wanna make sure you take a look at this car and then make your own assumptions about what's offered here. But this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2023 Dodge Hornet GT all-wheel drive.